Hi everyone, this is Grace and today we will be decorating these super cute, super fun summer minis. I call this my summer vibe set because I'm just feeling the vibes. These are all mini cookies, which means they're around two-ish inches, which is pretty small. They are all from the same set. It's one set that was put together by Brighton Cutters. I will link those cutters in the description of this video. So I didn't come up with these shapes. I didn't come up with the combination. That was all Amanda over at Brighton Cutters. Now, mini cookies. Lots of things to keep in mind when doing minis. First of all, when designing your minis, you wanna make them pretty much as simple as possible because even though they're small, if you do a complicated design, it can take you just as long to do these mini cookies as it would a big cookie. And especially if you're selling your cookies, you don't wanna be taking the same amount of time to do something small as big because you're not going to get paid as much for the smaller cookie, right? So rein things in, make things simple, make things easy on yourself. I'm not always that good <laughs> at making my minis as simple as they could be, but I really tried with this set. I really tried. I could have made it even simpler. Like the roller skates I'm doing right now, I was just dying to do this, this uh, rainbow design, but that certainly made it take longer. And a way to simplify this is to just make this a plain green roller skate. And there's nothing wrong with that. I was just doing a little extra. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Another thing that I like to do with minis that's different from other sets is I always do a one consistency outline and flood. Now that's not different. I do do that with big cookies as well, but my consistency is super thick. And sometimes I make it even too thick and I kind of regret it, but I digress. <laughs> I recommend making your flood definitely on the thicker side. Like this is a thick flood. This just, just barely streams off the spoon. And even then sometimes it's like just before it streams off. Like that's how thick I'm working with. Now it's moments like these when I'm doing a wet on wet design where I really regret making such a thick, <laughs> A thick icing uh, because I have to do things like this where I'm using my scribe to actually help the icing settle into each other because it, it was so thick that by the time I got the rainbow on there it even started to crust just ever so slightly but nonetheless I still recommend a thick flood um, and that is because it will help prevent cratering you know we've talked about cratering before the smaller the space the more likely it is to crater and just inevitably you're going to be flooding smaller spaces, smaller cookies. So use that thick flood. That black there was a soft peak piping consistency. And here, I think this, this is like a really soft <laughs> piping consistency. I made these, uh, I made these roller skates at the end of my decorating time and my icing had started to separate. It was humid, yada, yada, yada. So my icing was a little bit thinner than where it started, but oh well, it happens. Um, what I love about this roller skate design, even though it's kind of complicated, I was able to do it in one go. And that is because I used such a thick flood and because it started to kind of set and crust just enough so that I could go over these details with that black piping consistency that's a, obviously a bit thicker. Now let's move on to this super cute creamsicle. This is another design that I managed to do in one step. And that is truly because I used such a thick flood, first of all, and I'm using a mix of consistencies. So since it's such a thick flood, it has just enough time to kind of set up so that I can put other sections next to it. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that if it was a much thinner flood. And you can see here, I'm using such a thick flood that I need to use the tip of my bag to encourage the icing to settle. You can do this with a scribe. You can do this by jiggling the cookie, tapping the cookie, but I often prefer to use the tip of the bag 
if it's if it's a really thick icing because that just saves time there's no time in shifting your bag <laughs> to your scribe or whatever and you know time i was gonna say time is money but that does not really apply here <laughs> the point is that um the, the faster you can get to getting that icing to settle the better um that white there that you can kind of barely see sorry because my background that i'm piping on is white um, that's just the creamsicle little drip drizzle. That is a soft peak piping consistency as well. So is the, the stick here <laughs> that I just piped. That's the creamsicle. So freaking cute. Oh, I just love this set so much. Next up, we have the bathing suit. This is another one of my favorites from this set, but if I'm being totally honest, I think probably almost all of the designs are my favorite. <laughs> I just really love this set. Um, the first thing that I did there was I used an edible marker. Yes, it's edible. I will link them in the description of the video. They're also in my Amazon shop. I like to just mark out those lines um, with an edible marker because it just makes actually piping a little less stressful. So I don't have to think about where to pipe. I just see the lines, I see the guides, and I pipe. <laughs> Makes sense, right? I think one of the things I also love about this set, other than the adorable shapes, is the color palette. And I really enjoy coming up with color palettes. I use my iPad to just sketch out the designs and come up with the color palette. I always do the color, color palette first. I think that's really important because it also gives you an enabling constraint of whatever colors you're working with and you've probably heard me talk about this before it's really important to limit the number of colors you're using most of my sets these days are probably anywhere from three to six colors i'd say maybe like four to five is my sweet spot and that is just because the more colors you do the longer it takes to mix your icing and mixing and coloring and bagging icing easily takes a couple hours and the more colors the harder it is so i like to come up with color palettes at the beginning i know what i'm working with and i usually try to mix it up so if i've done a summer set before for example which i have i want to do a different color palette than the last one i did so the last one i did was a bunch of neons bright colors and i wanted something a little different i was always getting also getting some like 70s 80s vibes with this set in the designs so i wanted the colors to kind of reflect that so i guess my colors are more more 70s a little more muted <laughs> um i just i'm obsessed with teal and orange next to each other i love that yellow i let's see sorry i just <laughs> lost my train of thought there in coming up with the colors how do i do this so I I really do try to use as few colors as possible. So if there are places where I can kind of bend the rules on what a color is quote unquote supposed to be versus kind of what I can make it pass as if it is a recognizable item, for example, like the pineapple in this set. Um, maybe that's the only, I mean the flamingo. That's another one. But anyway, I digress. There is the bathing suit. So cute. So cute. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of flamingo, here I am piping this cutie patootie. A couple of things just came to mind. So first off, getting back to the color thing, last, last thought on that one is when I came up with my color palette. So flamingos, like flamingos need to be pink. They need to be some form of pink in my opinion. That's not one that I want to bend too far. So I knew out of the 11 shapes, I was going to have two predominantly pink cookies already because I have this flamingo and then the flamingo, uh, little floaty guy. So in figuring out what color I wanted to do, you know, for the sunglasses, for the popsicle, I wanted to make sure that I was using different colors. I usually try to make sure that I have one, at least one cookie in every set that is predominantly one of the colors in the color palette. So like a predominantly pink cookie 
orange cookie, teal cookie, etc. That I just think it, I think it gives good visual balance and it just makes sure I'm, I don't know, I'm using a good balance of all the colors. Yeah. So <laughs> to the flamingo right here, I just let that first layer crust over before I went in and did his little, or her, or their, um, little wing there. This set of minis, I will just give a heads up that some of them are pretty small in terms of the little nooks and crannies. Like that flamingo there was, for me, a bit hard to get out of my, uh, to get out of the cookie cutter, like the dough out of the cookie cutter as I was cutting them. This one was challenging too, the sunglasses. That's definitely my least favorite part of minis is actually cutting them out of the dough and baking them because it always takes so much longer than larger cookies. The baking is definitely my least favorite part. Now I love decorating mini cookies because they're just so cute and I find that not only is it better but like you can get away with <laughs> doing much simpler designs on minis and I'm a big fan of simple designs. Um, I also just love seeing like a whole array of these adorable mini cookies in one place. Anywho, <laughs> um, what else can I tell you about this set? So these sunglasses in particular, if you're un, uh, what's the word? Uncomfortable doing what I'm doing here, which is just freehanding the shape of these glasses, you could absolutely take an edible marker and sketch out the sunglasses here, or the glass frame, totally fine to do that. I was just living free, y'all. Um, I don't use an edible marker unless I really feel that I need to. And here I am actually using piping consistency. It's a soft peak piping consistency and I'm doing some pressure piping here I you could see there that I was using the tip of my bag to uh, to jiggle out the icing to help it settle again as I mentioned before I prefer to do that method instead of using a scribe it just works better for me and here I am again using soft peak piping consistency because these are all really small spaces and I did not want to have any craters. No craters, no thank you. Crater free life here, but that meant, so I was trying to do these little reflections in the corner. Eh, they didn't really sink all that well because hello, I was using piping consistency, but oh well. Barely any craters, very happy grace. So there are the sunglasses. Here is the cutie patootie pineapple. I had to pivot a little bit, you'll see in a minute. Such is life, such is cookie decorating. So this was one of those where I had to kind of figure out how to do the colors. And I'm working with this kind of goldy yellow, really into this color. Using my scribe to help settle. And then I'm coming in with a thick flood again and there's this brown that I use. So I use this brown um, for the shaka sign and the stick of the popsicle and I think that's, oh, and the cone of ice cream cone. So you can see I kind of found one brown that just kind of worked well enough for all of those so I didn't have to make multiple different browns. No thank you. Now this is where I had to pivot because by the time I made these pineapples, my soft peak piping consistency, ugh, it had thinned out a bit. You can see here, it's like almost like a flood. So I couldn't pipe all of these leaves in one go because the icing was just sinking into itself and it didn't have any definition. So the trick to that, because I was not having remixing my icing, is I just alternated the leaves and let those crust and then went in and did the opposites. So I still had definition in between them. So just a little trick, keep that in mind. 
here I am doing this ice cream cone. I realized after I did this, this could also totally be cotton candy. That would be super cute to do with the tiny little cone cup at the bottom. This here, I do believe is, that was flood consistency and I allowed that to crust ever so slightly just so I could come in with piping consistency here and just do these little crisscrosses to kind of give it more of a waffle cone effect. And then I move the cookie because you know me, move the cookie to the angle that is most convenient to decorate. Now I break this rule all the time though when I'm filming because I try to move the cookie as little as possible. I only move it when I absolutely have to when filming and for that one, I absolutely had to. That white there was a medium to almost stiff peak piping consistency and I wanted to have that thicker, no I'd say it was a medium so that um, it really held its shape in the beautiful swooshy <laughs> layering of my ice cream cone. I know, how much can I talk about that? All right, so we're moving on to these cute flamingo floaties. Here I am using, I believe, I'm using that soft peak again. If I was using a flood consistency, I wouldn't need to do all that jiggling to help it settle. I would just be able to pipe it and kind of be done with it. But again, I was worried about cratering, so made sure to use the thickest icing possible. That is one of my number one tips to prevent cratering, among other things. But if you're doing an application and you're afraid it's going to crater, use the thickest icing you possibly can for that application big fan of doing this soft peak for smaller spaces like this. Helping it to settle out. And then on top of using the thickest icing possible, I always pop it in my dehydrator for about 15 minutes at ASAP <laughs> as soon as possible after piping so it can crust as soon as possible, which can help which can help prevent craters. It is not uh, guaranteed by any means. So here again, I'm able to do this, this part in one go because I'm using a thicker piping consistency next to that, what I made into a sort of flood. So there's still a definition in between the sections. Et voila, I am using a piping consistency for that black dotting that eye and then I let that crust over and then did the little little wing flap and that is the cute floaty oh this set just gets me every time this next cookie is a shaka sign for those who don't know what this is it's a hand gesture that comes from Hawaii and surf culture um, and it's a gesture of friendly intent so it, it can mean a lot of different things it can mean hang loose right on thank you things are great take it easy so just a laid-back positive good intent good life kind of sign that I think goes nicely with the rest of this set and my, my summer vibes. But again, this was a, a set that was designed by Brighton Cutter, so it all came together and was supposed to go together. And I'm going to be honest here, <laughs> I really struggled with how to do the overlay fingers that you're going to see me do in a second. So first I flood the cookie as always. And I let that crust over just ever so slightly so that I can then put these fingers on top. <laughs> uh, I agonized over how long they should be, how wide they should be. Oy. I think in the end, I probably made them a little too short, I think. But I also think maybe the proportions of the thumb and pinky are a little off too. But y'all, it's a cookie. <laughs> um, it's okay if it's not just like life if it's not perfect looking I still think it's awesome so 
That's the Shaka sign. And it's not the summer set without a watermelon, people. You gotta have your watermelon. I've done a decent number of watermelon cookies in my day. And for this one, I was definitely regretting not having, I think, a thicker consistency in the green and the white. Did I say thicker? I meant a thinner consistency because I ended up having to do this kind of pressure piping so that it would actually settle down or settle out, settle, settle, flatten, smooth as best as possible. Just took me longer. I wish that I could have just piped and been done with it, but alas. Uh, this pineapple, pineapple, this watermelon cookie in particular, I like because it has the cute little bite mark out of it instead of just being like a half circle or a slice. I like that. And same deal here with the white. I'm using a soft peak piping consistency and I'm having to kind of jiggle it out. Not a big deal, but I did a couple without doing this and as they started to dry, I just realized there was too much kind of texture left that I didn't want to see in the edge. So no biggie. You might notice here that my white is really popping and no, it is not naturally that bright white. Not that long ago, I started adding white food coloring to my white icing. Many other people have always done that, but I just never felt like I really needed to because I can get my icing pretty white, just not like a bright white. So I like to add typically the Sugar Art Master Elite in white. It's a highly pigmented powder that's activated with water. The only time I won't use that and I'll use say my Americolor uh, white gel food coloring is if my icing is already thin enough because the one downside to the master elites is that you do have to use water to activate the powder so and of course adding water to your icing thins it and if you're if you've mixed a color that is already the thickness that you need having to add water to it obviously ruins the consistency so just keep that in mind if you're ever adding master elites this was another cookie where I <laughs> kind of regretted my thicker flood because it just made doing these um, seeds a little harder but but I did make this extra harder on myself because I only made a piping consistency of the black so I'm dragging <laughs> piping consistency through a flood right now which is a little hard to do but I managed well enough hard in terms of getting the icing to settle flat you saw those little peaks at the end so I needed to use my scribe to kind of help them settle in and that is the watermelon and then last but not least we have this super cute balloon dog I remember balloon animals at parties so well, especially the ones that went around your head. <laughs> I don't know even know what they were. I guess they could be different animals that went around your head, but anyway, curious if anyone else grew up with balloon animals. This one, my goal was to just kind of make it a patchwork balloon animal. And I am using my soft peak piping consistency for all of these sections. And to be honest, I think this was the last cookie that I did of the set. And so I was tired and I just wanted to be done. Um, I could have done a better job helping each of the sections to settle. I did a pretty decent job on this one because I was filming it. But if you look at pictures of the whole set, you'll see that the balloon dog has some sections that have little peaks on them and that's the moment where I lifted the bag from the icing and you get those peaks because the icing is on the stiffer side and it can't settle on its own but I still think this is a super cute 
um, super cute balloon dog. I did sketch out all the colors, so I was looking at a sketch to know which color to put where. I wasn't just flying by the seat of my pants here, but you could fly by the seat of your pants. It doesn't really matter. Oh, look at the little cutie guy. And then this, this is the whole set, friends. Uh, I just had so much fun making this. Minis just give me a big smile. I hope they give you one too. And I hope you try making this. I hope, you know, she sells them in smaller sets too, not all 11 at a time. So you could just buy a couple or buy the entire set. You could use some of these minis in a set with larger cookies, just something to keep in mind. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you make them and have a sweet one.